Now, as you're riding down this slide here, dealing with Bronsted and Lowry, we're going to just, I'm going to discuss a little bit so we can kind of bring back our recollection of Arrhenius. We talked about him last week. Savante Arrhenius. Now, what Arrhenius said acids and bases were, first of all, he said that an acid is a compound that contains hydrogen that form hydrogen ions as the only positive ion when they dissociate. Arrhenius also said that a base, an Arrhenius base, is a compound that form hydroxide ions as the only negative ion. So he came up with this idea that an Arrhenius acid, Arrhenius base. Now, the problem was that some bases did not qualify based on the de definition that Arrhenius had, okay? So some bases would not qualify. So what happened is these two gentlemen, Bronsted and Lowry, came along and they had a different idea, a different theory of what acids and bases were. So, Bronston Lowry said that an acid is a hydrogen ion donor. And they said that a base is a hydrogen ion acceptor. So, an acid donates hydrogen ions, a base accepts hydrogen ions. Now on the next slide coming up, we're gonna I'm gonna show you exactly what Bronsted and Lowry were getting at. I'll give you a second here to copy this down. So as we look at this specific equation here, we have ammonia, NH3, with water. And when this happens, we have the ammonium ion, NH4 plus 1, as the positive ion. And the hydroxide ion as the negative ion. So basically, what we're looking at is we can think of it like this hydrogen ion from water right there goes over there to make the NH4 plus 1. So which substance is donating a hydrogen ion? Okay, which substance is donating the hydrogen ion? H2O, the water. So according to Bronston and Lowry, a hydrogen ion donor is a Bronston and Lowry acid. Who is accepting the hydrogen ion? Well, that is the ammonia. So according to Bronston and Lowry, a hydrogen ion, a hydrogen ion acceptor is a Bronsted and Lowry base. Okay. So we look over at the product side of this reaction and we can see these conjugates, a conjugate base, a conjugate acid. Okay. 
We don't know what conjugates are yet, so let's take a look at what a conjugate and deal with conjugate acid and base pairs. Conjugate acid base pairs are two substances that are related by the loss or the gain of a single hydrogen ion. By definition, a conjugate acid is the particle that is formed when a base gains a hydrogen ion. A conjugate base is the particle that remains when an acid donates a hydrogen ion. So if I switch back to the previous slide, okay, and I remember, okay, a conjugate acid is the particle that is formed when a base gains a hydrogen ion. So I look back here. Who is gaining the hydrogen ion? Right here, ammonia. Ammonia gains a hydrogen ion. So whatever is formed when the base gains the hydrogen ion is the conjugate acid right here. Okay, The substance formed when the base gains the hydrogen ion is the conjugate acid. Well, here is what is donating, the Bronston and Lowry acid is donating the hydrogen ion. The substance that remains after the hydrogen ion was donated is the conjugate base. So that's why the OH here, the OH minus, is the conjugate base. Now, as I forward on a slide, it leads us to just a little different situation to talk about. Here we have HCl plus water yielding the hydronium ion and the chloride ion. Now if you're looking here at my two reactants, which one is donating the hydrogen ion? Okay. Which one is donating the hydrogen ion when I'm looking at these two here? Who's do donating the hydrogen ion to who? HCl is taking the hydrogen ion and donating it to the water, correct? So, remember that the substance that remains after the acid donates the hydrogen ion is the conjugate base. And the substance formed when the base accepts the hydrogen acid, or excuse me, the hydrogen ion, is the conjugate base acid. So if you look, hang on with me here a second, if you look at this, on the previous slide, water was an acid, wasn't it? Because it donated the hydrogen ion. In this particular one, water is a base. So when we see something like that, we call that amphoteric. A substance that can act as both an acid and a base. Okay, a substance that acts sometimes as an acid, sometimes as a base, is an amphoteric substance. Garrett? Absolutely. Okay, we can see on the product side 
of the ions that happened when the dissociation occurred? Absolutely. Okay, so we can look at, we can look at my, our reactant side and say, okay, which one of these has gained the hydrogen ion? Obviously, obviously, could this guy right here gain the hydrogen ion? No. Okay, so it had to be that one that was gaining the hydrogen ion. I don't think we're going to see that, okay? I don't think we're going to see that. And, and remember, folks, that this is right here, this is Bronsted and Lowry, okay? This is their theory. Does it mean it has to be 100% correct? Was Arrhenius 100% correct? Okay? So we're going to see some building on to this, Okay? We're going to see some building on. Arrhenius said, you know, acids give hydrogen, have hydrogen ions when they dissociate. Bases have hydroxide ions. Well, these guys came on to say, well, it's not necessarily that. It's dealing with gaining and losing the hydrogen ion. Now, you're going to see my next slide. We're going to go to somebody else. Okay? It's going to be somebody different than Bronston and Lowry, and that is, and that is, and that is Mr. Gilbert Lewis. And Mr. Gilbert Lewis has his own ideas about acids and bases. And Mr. Lewis is focusing on the donation or the acceptance of pair of electrons during a reaction. Does anybody remember all the way back when? When we dealt with Lewis dot structures. Well, who do you think Lewis is with the dot structures. How about Gilbert? Okay, and what were the dots? Do you remember? Electrons. And what's Lewis talking about here in terms of acids and bases? Electrons. Think it's a coincidence? I think not also. Okay, so Lewis Acids and bases. So, Gilbert Lewis said the donation or the acceptance of electrons during a reaction is what is dealing with whether it's an acid or a base. So here we go. Go ahead and write this down and then we'll talk about it here in a second. So when we're looking at this Lewis definition of acids and bases, Lewis said that an acid is a substance that can accept a pair of electrons to form a covalent bond. Lewis said a base is a substance that can donate a pair of electrons to form a covalent bond. So if you look at this and look at the difference from our side over here, our so to speak, pro or excuse me, reactant side, compared to our product side here, we have these two things combining together to form a covalent bond. This guy right here, okay? That covalent bond right there. So who is donating the electrons for that covalent bond? right here. So that is what Gilbert Lewis would say is a base. And Gilbert Lewis would say the substance that has accepted, that has accepted those pairs of electrons, that is a Lewis acid. So once again, just a different theory. 
Just a different theory. Let's talk about them again, the ones that we commonly talk about with acids and bases. Who are the people? Let's review them. Who are the people we talk about? Who was the first guy? What? Arrhenius was the first guy. Remember, he said acids dissociate to hydrogen ions, bases dissociate to hydroxide ions. Okay? Who was the second pair? Bronston and Lowry. Bronston and Lowry stated what? Acid is a hydrogen ion donor, and a base is a hydrogen ion acceptor. And then our third theory here with Gilbert Lewis was that a base is an electron, a pair of electron donors, and a pair of electron acceptors was a Lewis acid. Now, we're just going to touch base, and we've already done this, ladies and gentlemen. You have done this. You have dealt with a neutralization reaction before. When we talked, what kind of a reaction is this? Look at it. What's going on? What is it? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. We've got some dissension among the troops here. Huh? I would agree with that assessment. A double replacement reaction. Okay? And when we talked about double replacement reactions, we talked about a specific type of a double replacement reaction that dealt with acids and bases. And we even named that specific type as a neutralization reaction. Okay. A neutralization reaction is a reaction in which an acid and a base react in an aqueous solution to produce a salt and water. So if you want to think about it as the acid is neutralizing the base, or vice versa. The base is neutralizing the acid. Either way that you look at it, it is a neutralization reaction. Now, we are going to get into more in depth with these types of neutralization reactions Later on next week, I believe it's going to be around Tuesday that we'll talk about these neutralization reactions. But if you look, if you look here, the very first one, hydrochloric acid, HCl, and sodium hydroxide, NaOH. So basically what we're going to see is we're going to swap, once again, we're going to swap the cations to get NaCl and HOH. But what's HOH? H2O. Okay, so that's how we're going to get the water. Now, I want you to notice, I want you to notice looking at this hydrogen here, looking at this hydrogen right here, and this hydroxide right here. I only have one hydrogen, don't I? How many hydroxides do I have? How many hydroxides do I have right here? How many OHs? One. One OH, right? Okay. Now, here is the second equation. The second equation says that I've got H2SO4, sulfuric acid, reacting with KOH, potassium hydroxide. When I switch the positive ions, once again, 
I get K2SO4, potassium sulfate, and water. Now, when I look at my hydrogens here, okay, notice that I have two hydrogens there, don't I? Okay, I have two hydrogens there, so this tells me, okay, you should automatically think about it like this. If I have two hydrogens, I'm going to need some coefficients to balance some things out in that neutralization reaction. Okay, so if I have two hydrogens there, I'm going to do some balancing out in a neutralization reaction. We're going to talk about that come next week also. We're going to deal with what we call equivalence. Okay, a, a different term we'll go with next week, the equivalence. But can you see that there's two hydrogens here? How many hydroxides here? Still only one, but what have we done to it? We've had a coefficient. Okay. Do you think it's a coincidence that the hydroxides and the hydrogens equal out? Okay. What if I would have a triprotic acid? A triprotic acid. What? 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 A triprotic acid. Phosphoric acid. Okay? By, by what we're learning here, the OH would have what in front of it? A three. Okay? That's just some ideas that could help us out with how we balance the equation. Okay? And it's not a coincidence. We're going to learn that here in a little bit. We're going to learn that next week. It's not a coincidence that there's three hydroxides there. Okay? Now, once again, this has been our discussion today. We talked about Bronson and Lowry. We talked about Lewis acids. Okay, so we finished out our theories with individuals dealing with acids and bases. And we're going to hit really hard next week neutralization reactions. Okay.